Hi everybody. Okay, um, I just uploaded a video yesterday which was Thursday and that was the first video I've uploaded in a hundred days because I've been too busy building out my tiny house, she shack thing, um, dealing with animals and getting ready for more animals. Anyway, um, and I have some alterations that I need to do. So I'm just going to bring you guys along with that. So right now I am working on a girl's dress, a little girl's dress for a wedding. And because you know, the size, the size that she needed, um, was actually really, really long. So five and a half inches too long. So I'm just going to shorten this and then shorten the lining and I'll just show you how I do it. Now, um, because she's small, you know, short, um, I decided that I was just going to cut off this length. Now, if it was, if, if, the, if the proportions needed it, I would probably just move this up, but because she's so small, I didn't want this to be like halfway between ankle and and waist so I'm just taking it up from the bottom so what I did was I measured her I measured um, how much needed to come up I had her put it on and I just measured the front and you can tell here I even pinned it a, it's a little off here so I'm going from here to here I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to go all the way around the skirt using that same measurement because she is a young girl. She doesn't have um, like her feminine fe uh, figure yet because she's so young and the dress is all one length. So I will start out by measuring this. This is exactly five and a half inches. Now the hem is a quarter inch so that that fold is one eighth of an inch but if you double that it'll be a quarter of an inch so I am going to mark it here and then I'll mark it again at the quarter inch mark but before I do I need to make sure that this will come out of this fabric because I don't want to leave any marks so I'm going to take this over I'm going to mark it here and then I'm going to go to the ironing board and see if I can steam that out because I don't want to leave any marks in the dress. Okay, this is where I marked it and I pressed out and there's no residual anything there. So I can safely use that marking pen. Um, I will leave um, a link in the description box if you guys want to go check out these pens. They are amazing. I don't know why I've never had them before. Well, except for the fact I didn't know they existed. So what I do is because I need it shortened five and a half inches, I am going to, so if I need it five and a half inches, then I'm going to remove five and a quarter. That way it gives me an extra quarter inch for the hem. So this will be my fold line and that will be my cut line. So <laughs> now it, I hope I don't confuse you guys with this but what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold on that first line on the cut line and I'm going to sew really small and then I am going to fold it up to the the new fold line and then I can sew it down but it will be a lot smaller does that make sense Okay, so I feel like I'm 
doing this wrong because the dress is over here and I feel like it needs to be the other way but I don't have a lot of room so I'm gonna do five and a quarter five and a half and I'm just going to make these all the way around. I'm not making I'm not going to draw a line and I'll show you why when we get to the ironing board I mean to the sewing machine sorry I had another thought going through my head <laughs> okay we're just gonna do this all the way around the dress Okay, okay, I have the dress. Um, it's right side out, but I'm using the part that's um, on the bottom, so it looks like I'm looking at the inside of the dress. I'm going to fold it on this line, the one on the right, which is closest to the hem. So I'm gonna fold that there. It didn't go all the way through to the top, so it's kind of hard for me to see it. And I'm going to sew as close as I can to the fold. I want to get it close enough, but I don't want the light to overpower things. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm holding the next dot that line here and you can see it's on grain and that's the most important part is that everything stays on grain or we're going to have issues with the hem but even when I was I was marking it you can see like sometimes the hem was like this but I was always the the right measurement from the hem so even though it looked wonky it's not wonky Okay, so I'm holding this, the next dot or the next mark. Okay, I reached that dot. I'm grabbing the next one right here and make sure that I have it folded on the, the right mark. This table is not supposed to bounce. I got a new table and it still bounces. This is gonna take a long time. Okay, did you guys catch my mistake? <laughs> Literally from the time I took off sewing my first stitch, I got everything wrong and um, everything within my being wanted to um, stop take all the thread out redo it but at the, on the other hand I want my videos to be real and honest so and it's really not that big of a deal um, this is over 24 hours later I'm coming back to finish this job so I was saying that I wanted the dot closest to the hem, which is this one. So everything should have been folded like this, but I've been doing it like this. Now, I wanted to change it because that's just the kind of little things that bother me. 
but then I realized this is a little girl's dress. This dress basically skims the floor and if it's a quarter of an inch off, it's not a big deal. So since I want it to be honest and real, I'm going to show you my mistake. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I finished that first fold up and I sewed close to the fold. Now I'm going to go to the ironing board and I'm not going to show this, but I'm going to take this and I'm going to press this seam up towards the dress because this is such a tiny little hem that if I make a mistake and cut on the dress side, that's going to be hard to um, fix where it's not noticeable. So I'll be right back. Okay, the hem is, or this new fold is pressed up towards the dress and I am just going to very carefully trim as close as I can to that fold without cutting the stitches. Okay, I have the excess trimmed off. I'm trying to find <laughs> the hem of this dress without it getting too twisted up. I'm going to find a seam and I'm going to fold it up one more time. Now, sometimes it's hard when you're starting with a little knot like this, this area under the presser foot so um, I might have to get past it and um, backstitch to it and hopefully it doesn't get caught. Okay from here I'm just going to fold it like this and just try to keep it the same uh, width all the way down.
Okay, now I'm going to hang the dress up and mark the lining. Okay, this is the lining and and because um, the dress looked fine before I hemmed it, the proportion between like the lining and the skirt or the dress, I'm just going to measure up the same amount. I took this up five and a half inches. I'm going to take this up five and a half inches. But the difference is this one, the lining has a surged hem. So I could hem it if I want to, but given um, my time limit, I'm going to just do like I always do, or I prefer to always do, and that is if it has a surged hem, I put a surge hem on it. If it has a rolled hem, I put a rolled hem. If it's an inch hem, I put an inch hem on it. So basically I just um, give it back looking like it did when they gave it to me, just with the necessary um, alterations. Now the thing with this is I'm going to do five and a half inches because that's how much that um, I took up. So you know what? It was a little bit shorter. So we'll go five and three quarters. It might have been okay anyway, but I'd rather just be on the safe side. So I will do this, I'll mark it, and then I will just surge it all off. Um, I like to do the cutting and surging at the same time. It just kind of saves, saves me a little bit of time. I'm hoping that as I mark here, it'll go all the way through the other side. We'll see. It does not. <laughs> it doesn't bleed through. So I'll flip it over and do the other side separately. Okay, everyone, this is the last step. Now, I just took a cut in up to the line that I need to start my surging on, and um, I'm just gonna go all the way around. If I had been doing this the way I did the dress, then I would not even be doing it. I would say, just do the same thing um, that we did on the, on the dress part. But since I'm doing it this way, I'll go ahead and show you guys how I do it. So I cut that because I didn't do, oh, I didn't want to do a, a cut that goes along the hem and then gradually come into where I need it to be. I'm just going to place this here next to my blades and then surge all the way around. I'm sorry, my um, serger doesn't have a light. So maybe if I move my machine this way a little bit, maybe that makes a difference. And maybe not. Okay, we'll just do it and connect all these little red dots. Now, what I'm afraid of, because this fabric is really cheap, it just, it's like one of the cheapest fabrics you can get for a lining. And so I'm afraid that my serging may not look really good. If it turns out not looking good, I will probably just fold it up 
um, just one time and stitch it down, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I think it's trying to. Okay, you guys, when you start, when you saw me starting to surge off this edge, this is what it looks like, and it was really, it looks really bad, and the stitching was wrong. So I made some adjustments to my machine. I am guilty of not experimenting with my machines. I learn how to do what I need to do and I go with it. But I just spent some time the last couple of days to um, figure out how to do different things with my machine. And I think I came up with a solution. But let me get this trimmed off and I'll show you what I did. I will probably take some time to get this stitch out so that it doesn't interfere with my work. Okay, so on this one, um, sometimes it's when you're dealing with a little bit of fabric like this, it's hard to get a double fold. And um, so I've decided to do it this way. This is not something I've ever done before, but it's always kind of been in the back of my mind that when someone puts a narrow hem in something and I'm thinking about the type of fabric, if it's a loose weave or if in my mind I feel like it's not going to hold because it's so close to the edge, I just fold it up. Now, I don't know if this is a new thing or not because I've never seen anybody do it, um, but I can't imagine that no one has ever done it. I've just not seen it. So for this, to um, eliminate having to take up too much of a hem because I'm already on the edge and because my fingers are too big to get that little tiny double fold um, I'm gonna do it this way and it's a rolled hem so I'm only working with my right needle and it's a rolled hem and I tucked my blade away so I'm not cutting anything else off I'm just doing this little tiny fold and I'm going to surge over it and I'm kind of worried about this because it's already kind of chewed up from having surged it and cut it before and then taken the stitches out. So we'll see how it turns out. Now do you see how the the um, grain is off because the, the hem is curved? You have to just do little bits at a time and kind of let that curve around. And I'm trying to align the fold with the, the side of my presser foot here. So that's what it looks like on the right side. I don't know if you can see that very well. And the wrong side, you see that little bit right there. And because of all the stitching, that's not going to come undone. It doesn't look the greatest, but I believe it will work nicely. Okay, I'm running into the problem where I told you I'm around a curve and it's really hard. I might be coming out of it now. It's really hard to keep it folded and going in. 
And so sometimes you have to sew for like a half an inch and then readjust it in half an inch and readjust it just to get around those curves because a hem is not straight across. And I think we're coming out of it now. See right here, you're on a curve. So we are going to hold it here. I have the side seam coming up, so I'm going to fold it down now and just hold it until it gets under the presser foot. All right, this is what the front looks like. I think it turned out pretty good. The back, not so much. I will get my scissors and trim that off so it looks neat. Um, yeah, I think I need to spend more time with my machines and getting to know all that they can do and just try out different techniques. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.